Hello, Mobette. Sarah McCarty here on the first day of summer with a brand new start to how I'm going to do things. Um, I know last January or December, February, somewhere in that range, I put out feelers about chatting and the response was lackluster, um, to put it mildly, and which was kind of a big disappointment to me because I actually love to talk to people. I love to chat with them. I loved going on book tours just because I got to meet a lot of people. You know, but the world has moved on while I was sick and there are new ways of doing things. And one day when I was poking around on YouTube, because I love YouTube for documentaries, I'm a huge documentary fan. Um, I watch a lot of them. <laughs> uh, but uh, I thought, you know, this is really kind of an entering for interesting forum. I mean, you can listen when you want to. You can stop it. You can go forward. Um, there is a comment section, which gives a nice interactive feel to it. And I thought, and I can do it, you know, because if I have to put things down in writing, if I'm going to write a blog, my obsessive compulsive nature takes over and I start sweating over every word. For me to write a 500 page blog, it probably take me a week or two because I'm going to obsess over every word. I'm going to worry about being too wordy. I'm going to worry about not being concise enough. I'm going to worry about things not coming across the way I want. Um, because, you know, with writing, there's no, no expression, no vocal expression or whatever. But when it comes to talking, you know, I can, I can just freestyle it. And that is exactly how I'm going to, um, do my videos or my podcast or whatever this is called, where I talk and put a video up is I am not going to do editing. Uh, well, okay, there are certain circumstances under which I will do editing. Right now, I am sitting in my sunroom, which is also my office. I have dogs at my feet. I have a cat over there in a chair. And my parents are watching me rather avidly right now. So, and you know, if a so if a dog boofs or a cat meows, I'm not going to edit that out. I mean, this is my life and I'm kind of sharing part of my life with you. So I'm okay with that. But I'm not going, okay, put it this way. If my parents do anything other than give me a little come hither look and walk sideways over because they think I have something to eat and they say more than come on over here, well, then I'm going to, you know, edit that out because when they screech, let's just say that there's no reason for anybody but my ears, anybody's ears but mine to be blasted because they, they can be loud. They don't. They don't actually make much noise because they're pretty contented, but you know, they're, they have the intelligence of a three-year-old child. And if mommy isn't paying attention to them, they have been known to do what is necessary to get mommy to spin around. One of them can make the sound, the exact sound. Cause I, I don't know if anybody knows, but I fostered animals for 30 years. I did medical rescue for um, 30 years and one of them has learned to make the exact, and I do mean you can't tell the different sound, of a puppy in extreme distress. And even though I don't have any puppies, I tend to react very strongly to that sound. People will come running from other rooms. My mother will come in, or if I have any guests, they'll all come running over to see what poor puppy is being tortured. And then he'll just kind of sidle sideways up to the edge of the cage and go, come on over here. That's what he does. That's who he is. Um, he gets what he wants, so he does whatever he has to do. So I will, I will cut out any sounds of puppies in distress because they are not puppies in distress. It is a parrot wanting his way. But short of that, I don't think I'm going to edit. So I may use wrong words. I may say, um, more than I want to. Hopefully I won't because I really hate that. But I'm not, I haven't been doing this long enough, I think, to avoid the um syndrome. So to explain where I've been, and I, I think I, I've said it on my uh, webpage briefly, but I'll just go on. Um, I was sick. I was sick with a um, lingering illness that they finally have under control, which is wonderful. Um, but it gave me a, um, well, let's just say that you never really know much about your muse until you can't use it for a long time and it kind of just sits over there in the corner flopping about eating potato chips drinking soda chomping on chocolate and generally becoming a blob 
when I started feeling better, I thought I was, I honestly thought this, um, that I was going to come springing back into action. Before I got sick, I could write 10,000 words a day and they'd be good words. I might alter 1,500 or 2,000 of them, but they were, they were good words. It was good work. The, the story was moving. The first day I sat down and said, let's just get caught up. Let's just sit down and punch all this out. I literally sat for 10 hours and I could only get out 10 words and I threw those 10 words away. It was that bad. I kept working. I kept trying to plug at it, you know, just take my little muse out just for a little bit today. Let's just see if we can get it to go somewhere. Um, it, it was hard. It was rough. It was, and my biggest obstacle was the fact that I just kept thinking it was going to come back. Like it was just going to come back. Um, now I've through hard work and, um, hard experience, learned that I had to build my muse back up. I had to basically, you know, retrain myself. And I mean, I just sat there one day so discouraged. I was just sitting there thinking, oh my God, I'm never going to be a writer again. I'm never going to finish my stories. The voices in my heads will go, okay, they're not really voices in my head, but I, um, I see my books as movies in my head. And not being able to put that movie on paper, well, it was worse when there was no movies, but then there were movies again, but I wasn't able to put them on paper and make them real. So thinking I was never going to be able to be a writer again was very discouraging. And I, and I remember just sitting there on the couch, I don't know, with some stupid uh, inane show on TV. And I just sat there thinking, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm as inane as this show. As a matter of fact, this show is more creative than I am. And, you know, that's really bad. And, and, and I said, you know what? It took me a long time, a long time to develop my writing skills, but I did it once. And so by the end of my little pity fest, cause I don't have pity fest that lasts long, but I, I like to wallow in them now and then I said, you know what? I'm just going to teach myself all over again. I'm just going to one day at a time. And, you know, so for the next week I worked at writing and I would write, I was so happy. I wrote 40 words and then I would go back the next morning and look at them and it was just garbage. I threw it out, started over again. So it took me a week to write 40 words, um, that I liked. And I considered it a huge victory at the end of that week. I, I wasn't discouraged at that point because I had a new plan. I was going to build my muse back up. But the temptation to always think I was going to be able to do more than I did, that it was going to come back faster than it did, that was always there. And that was, you know, one of my problems because, quite frankly, I just wanted to get back to the starting line. I just, just to a point where I could write books and not be buried under obligations that I couldn't meet, that I couldn't catch up with. I mean, right now, my web page is the last of my things that I have to catch up on. I'm, I'm caught up on everything with the exception of my web page. So to me, that's, I mean, I can see the starting line now. So for you all who have been waiting so impatiently or patiently, I appreciate it both ways, just the fact that you're waiting. I am almost to the starting line. And in about another week, I will be back on the starting line, ready to run my usual race, but not as fast. Right now I'm writing 2,500 words a day, and that's actually a good number. I can work with that number. I can produce books in a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of time. It leaves me time to work on my web page because it's not taking me 10 hours to write 2,500 words. Um, I can, you know, my muse is back. I have stories in my head. Um, it's a good place to be. Um, and I do feel like I just ran a marathon just to get to the starting line. But the fact that the starting line is right there, right within reach, it's not somewhere so far out in the distance, I'll never get there. It's just right there. I'm happy. I have started looking around for website designers to bring my website back into the, uh, well, whatever, bring it up to date because, you know, it's old technology. Um, I haven't found somebody yet, but but I'm working on it. Meanwhile, I'm just going to update what I have until I find somebody whose style I like and um, that kind of thing. I am, uh, what else am I doing? Um, there you go. See, I just said, um, I hate saying, um, I just said, um, and I just clicked my tongue trying to remind myself what to do. Two things I'm desperately trying not to do in my podcast. I just did. Speaking of the podcast, I actually did a really good podcast yesterday. I was all happy already. I I went online to figure out how to, to edit it, you know, just to 
because I would stop it and pause it. And I know there's ways you have to put it together and how to compress it, you know, the technical stuff of uploading. But what I didn't do was save it. <laughs> and I was talking to someone and I was logging out of the program and my finger hesitated at the wrong spot. And I closed it without saving gone. It was actually a really good podcast too. Didn't have too many ums. <laughs> Only a couple parrot chirps and one dog bark. I thought I was doing pretty good, except I didn't save it. So rest assured today I'm saving this. For good or for bad, I am saving this. Okay, so let's talk about how I'm going to use my YouTube uh, channel. What I intend to use the YouTube channel for is I am going to to use it to discuss, you know, um, my thoughts on writing or events that are happening in writing, my struggles with characters, my cheering for characters, uh, random thoughts. I'm going to read excerpts on here. Uh, you know, I'm, I am trying to get my books into audio. The difficulty is all the, um, orators that I like tend to be like the real high end. So I'm either going to have to save up every penny I have or actually find somebody who's more in my price range. It'll likely be the latter. So I can put the books that I have on Kindle and um, Kobo in audiobook form. I have not, I have looked into print, but the prices for a print book was, would be so astronomical. I'm just not sure it's worth going into print. I mean, these, these create space books and whatever, they're pricey. Um, so I think I'm probably going to have to ask people how they feel about that. Do they really want them in print? Or are they happy with audio and um, digital? Because it, it's especially for the promise books, you know, the 130,000 word books, those, those will be through the roof. So I'm not sure that it's really worth that, but I'm looking into it. Um, but anyway, back to what I'm going to use. I'm going to have updates on what I'm doing, updates on book dates, uh, updates on, I'm going to read excerpts from all my books, not the sexy ones though, because you know, YouTube's uh, policy, uh, I don't want to get flagged down off YouTube. So we'll only be doing the PG excerpts I'll be reading. Um, I will probably because, darn it, I just did that clicking thing again, didn't I? Darn it. Anyway, the, um, I forgot what I was going to say too. Well, this is, this is a little stumbling block. I guess I better start hitting the pause button or learn to edit. The, um, probably because this format is easier and faster for me than updating a web page, and I can do this wherever I am, whereas web page updating, I can't, things will probably hit here first and then go to my web page, just so you know, um, because I think it's easier. And for me, it's important that I get the information out there um, in as many formats as I possibly can, of course, uh, but faster to me seems better. So if I can keep you abreast of what's going on by a YouTube uh, podcast faster than I can get an update to a web page, then for me, I'm going to, I'm going to do both, but you know, just be aware that probably this will be the faster one because it's the easier one. I won't always be speaking from my studio. I travel a lot and I've got to actually travel a lot in July. So you, there might be some from my phone or from my recorder. So maybe the sound won't be as, you know, perfect. But I, again, my goal is to keep the discussion going and to get the information out there. Now let's move on to information. Uh, the good news is uh, Luke's Cut, the last book in the um, Shadow Wrangler series will be released on November 28th of this year. So we just have a few more uh, months to go. I did enjoy that book. You know, some books are intense. Some are intense emotional. Some are just intense from subject matter. Some are funny. Some are lighthearted. You know, some are passionately lighthearted. I mean, they just, there's a different feel to every book. And, you know, I write books to a song. If I, I find a song that has the energy that I want in the book, and then I, or how the characters feel to me, because the characters come to me first in, in a random scene, actually. This is how I discover what I want to write. They come to me in a random scene, and I can feel their energy. I can feel everything about them. I can see it. And I'll, I'll find a song that matches that. For example, for Luke's Cut, the song is Come a Little Closer, Come a Little Bit Closer. And the book has that, 
that uh, playfulness, that uh, sense of the forbid being drawn in by the forbidden. Um, it's it's funny. The characters are good together. It's uh, fast paced. Got a lot of energy, a lot of action. I really enjoyed writing that book. I did. Um, I just finished handed in the final edits on it, so we're all good to go. Next, I'm going to finish up, and I'm in final edits on the Highland Burn book. I got those rights back, so that will be released on in Kindle and Kobo. I think it's Kobo. It's, I don't think it's Kobo. Whatever is uh, the uh, Barnes & Noble platform, I always confuse it with something else. So hopefully Kobo is it, if not the Barnes & Noble. So it'll be released through Amazon and um, Barnes & Noble in electronic format. Probably in late July or August, as I said, I've got a lot of traveling to do in July, so I'm not sure I'm going to finish all the edits by then, but I do have the cover, so I'm going to put that up. I'll be reading excerpts on here and then putting them up on the website. It's going to take me a while to get the website fully updated. I, I don't want to get buried in doing the website so I don't get books written. I don't want to get buried in writing books so I don't get the website updated or the podcast done, so... I'm going to balance things as I go. We have, um, so I'm going to have a Highland Burn. That is uh, three, no, four uh, men in that book that are drop dead gorgeous. That is an intense book. It does have some humor, but it's, it's, it's a intense emotionalism in the book and intense personalities between the main characters. I actually really enjoyed it again because I like writing intensity in whatever form it comes. But it's, it's a good book. I should advise you up front, this book is not a strict historical book. It came about because I was researching and I came across this one scene, this one battle in Scottish history, and it gave birth to a really intriguing what if. So I've kind of launched off this period of history, um, but it's not historically accurate. So please nobody get out, you know, <laughs> the historical books and start throwing them at me or bash me over the head with them. I, I put in the front of the book too. This is based on a historical incident that gave birth to a what if moment. And I've run with the what if. It's not science fiction or anything. I'm just paying, playing fast and loose with the time periods a little bit, stuff like that. But um, it's it's a good book. It, it really is. And the what if was just so intriguing. I, I ran with it. So there we go. <laughs> Um, after I finish with, oh, there's another, um, really somebody just start taking away my chocolate. Every time I say, um, one piece of chocolate for every time I say, um, <laughs> no, you probably shouldn't do that because if you did that, I would probably start editing out all the ums because you know, chocolate, chocolate's sacred milk chocolate. Of course, I don't like dark chocolate as much. So let's see, we have, uh, we've given out the release date. Oh, and um, Jackson's story, Promises Decide. That's going to be, I have the first, I'm waiting for my edits back on that. It will be released next summer. So that's good. And I'm hoping to have, I'm hoping to have one more book released between December and next summer. And that will be the second book in the other series. Everybody has wanted the sequel book to Conception. Uh, I got all my rights back to all my books. So I am able to write that book the way I wanted, which is fabulous because I kind of like having my way when it comes to writing books the way I want, the way I planned them. I mean, characters come to me and then when they look at them and say, you know, I just want to change everything you gave me, they get a little stubborn. And then I have to do things to them in the books, like make them impotent or whatever. Uh, which I did to poor Cougars from uh, Promises Keep. <laughs> he was a hard character to write. He gave me so much agony. I made him quit smoking. I made him impotent. And he still got his way. So I don't have a lot of control over how my characters want to be they seem to once they come to me it's like you work with what I give you lady or you're just going to do without so I'm learning to work with what they give me so I'm really happy I get to write that book and I'm hoping don't hold me to this I can't be 100 percent but I'm hoping to release it in April of next year maybe sooner we'll we'll see I'm hoping to have a book release every three to six months because heaven knows I have enough other books to write I am also oh I forgot to say um Berkeley wanted me to propose or ask me, you know, to propose another book or two in the Shadow Wrangler series. I, just because I propose it doesn't mean they're going to accept it. 
Um, that was a fun series, but what I under, my understanding is that Western historicals and paranormals have fallen out of favor. And this is a book which is a combination, you know, that series is a combination of both. So it could be a double whammy against it, or it could work out. We'll see. But I'm going to put the proposal together and see where it goes. You know, I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I think at this point, um, oh, I did it um again, didn't I? No, nobody, nobody take my chocolate yet. It has, that will start with the next video. <laughs> gotta, I have a piece of chocolate sitting right beside me. I, I don't want to lose that. So anyway, thank you so much for coming and listening to my podcast, which is now at 20 minutes. Okay, some podcasts will be shorter, some will be longer. I can be really chatty and I can be succinct. I think it's just going to depend on the subject at hand and the, hand and the mood. But feel free to drop me an email if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in a podcast. Nothing too personal, please. I mean, if it's too personal, I'm just not going to answer. You can ask anything you want. I'll just, I just reserve the right to determine if something's too personal. Um, also, please, uh, I guess, uh, subscribe because if you subscribe, you'll know when I'm going to, when I give a podcast, I don't have any schedule for podcasts. If the mood takes me, I'm just going to put them up there. Um, so if you subscribe that little bell thing at the top there, click on that. It uh, will let you know whenever I put a podcast out. I am also, um, I'm not sure what liking does, but everybody says, you know, like, subscribe and share. So I'll say what everybody else on YouTube says, like, subscribe and share. I'm not sure what the subscribing does, but like, subscribe, and share. I would appreciate it. Leave, send me an email on topics or leave comments down below. Ask me a question. I will read all my comments. Um, email is sarah at sarahmccarty.net. Uh, and I guess you just leave comments underneath the, the um, thing. And if you're somebody that I know, but I don't know your YouTube handle or whatever, please let me know who you are. Um, you know, cause I, I like to, I feel out of touch. Like I said, I'm bringing myself into the current technology. Cause I am kind of, you know, a dodo bird when it comes to stuff like this, I still write handwritten notes, but I did buy notably, which is actually a fabulous note program. It, it, it works for somebody like me who doesn't use things like Scrivener. It's more free flowing and that works for me. So I am using notably now. I want everybody to appreciate the fact that I have moved into an app to help me with things. It beats the index cards. <laughs> and like I said, because I have to travel so much, um, it, it helps to have everything on an electronic device. So I'm, I'm learning. So anyway, y'all have a good one. Um, I will hopefully have some new things up on the web page in two or three days. I am going to be, um, yeah, probably two or three days. I'll have, you know, some new stuff up on the web page. I hope. As long as I don't run into a technical difficulty. If I run into a technical difficulty, then it won't be. But I will definitely put excerpts. I will read excerpts here because I'm able to handle this. Whereas sometimes the web page, I, I run into issues. So take care and I will see you at the next podcast. Happy summer.